Okay, so welcome back to part two of the um, how to use a Wilton tin. Now, this has been in the oven and it's come out of the oven and we've actually let it cool in the tin. As you'll see, when you cool, cakes actually shrink. So it won't, one of the important things is that when it shrinks, it should remove itself and release itself from the side of the tin. And you'll clearly see that, that if I wanted to, I could remove that from the tin. So before we do that, I'm going to give you a quick little handy hint, and this can be used for any tin, so not just the Wilton tin. As you can see, it's risen up slightly above the tin, so when we want to put on our board, we don't want to have to cut it back, we don't want to have to level it. A very quick and easy way is to get yourself a beautiful long knife. This is a, one of our loyal knives that we sell in the store and online. So what you need to do is the idea is we're going to run it across the top of the surface of the tin, and then it's going to leave the cake wonderful and level. So you can see with this knife and our butter cake, I'm just running it straight across the top of the surface. Remove the bits that everybody um, around here is like pigeons. I'll come and eat this later on. We'll put that onto a, a uh, plate and I'm sure we'll put some mock cream or something with that later on. And then you can turn your tin and as you can see already, that's beautiful and level. Ready to go on the board. You don't have big gaps down the bottom that you've got to be worried about. There, you can still see a tiny little bit of a difference around the edge there, which is nothing to worry about. So we'll be back soon and we'll see how we prepare this then to decorate. So now that we've, uh, we've leveled our cake, we've got it sitting there waiting. What we want to do is you can see there's a lot of detail on this that's come out from the tin. Instead of trying to because we're going to pipe directly onto the cake. So instead of trying to keep your work that you're doing with the piping within the areas, we're going to um, make sure that they're distinctly marked out. Some people talk about putting raw icing or putting frosting, piping frosting. But today we're going to use melted chocolate. And one of the reasons for that is the brown stands right out. You can do it with white. You can do it with one of some of the candy melts. And what also happens is this dries hard the, hot, the uh, dark chocolate, and that way uh, there's no problems with it running into anything else, and it stands out so brilliantly. So I'll just show you that. So all I've done is melted some chocolate. This one here was a chocolate, like a, it's not even coverture or anything like that, it's just chocolate buttons. I use the dark chocolate because I like it because it's quite bright. The first thing I'm going to do, we've got a board. I generally use a 14 by 16 inch board for most Wilton tins. If it's, if it's too deep this way, you can use a 12 by 16. But with a 14 by 16, you can then also put a lovely scroll down the bottom with writing on it or something like that. So all I've used here is a disposal bag. I'm not even going to use a tip because we're not going to pay a lot of attention when it's finished to the outlining of the colours. So I just put into a disposal bag and cut the end of the tip off. And I'm now going to put a small amount of it on the board and put the cake, position the cake, and that also now dries and it sticks it to the board. You can also use royal icing. I don't tend to like with kids, children's cakes to put anything that's got egg in it because that's as in the icing because of the fact that there's so many allergies out there. So the practice for me is just we, we don't use royal icing as much as we used to. So now I've just got my bag cut the tip cut off it. So I'm just going to proceed to pipe on the detail. And I'm just squeezing very lightly because chocolate, I would, get, I would say that this is now lukewarm, this chocolate. I try not to have it too hot or it gets runnier. So you can see already it's, it shows beautifully where the lines are. And I also like, because I'm going to smooth along the bottom edge, I also like to do the actual edge of the cake. That's one side done. And I'll outline his beautiful body. Like I said, we're going to pipe right up to this. So it's not going to be too obvious. Probably not as good on the left hand side as I am on the right. I think that may just be nature. So 
So we just continue with the chocolate outline. Of course, the most important part of this process is, is for the chocolate to set. So I'm going to leave that aside for about 10 minutes for the chocolate to set. And before I go any further, I just want to quickly run through the care instructions for the little tins. Like I said, don't put them in the dishwasher. You pop them in the dishwasher, all of a sudden it loses its quite good shininess. It actually goes to a very, very dull flat grey. Almost the same colour as we have here, so it's a lot of difference. And I don't like to cook once, it's, once it goes like that, unless you give it another really, 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 really good clean. So all I do is use the nice soapy water and just basically clean with the warm soapy water. Get right into all the bits and pieces in there. Once you've done that, while your oven is still hot, well, as soon as you've turned your oven off and it's warm, if you quickly clean your tin, pop it into the oven, and that goes with every single tin, in particular the ones that have joins, like your rounds and squares. If you clean it very quickly with warm soapy water, pop it into the oven, it actually dries it out of the joints, so you won't ever get any rust or any sort of marks. If you look after your tins, especially with Wilton, and pretty much every tin we sell in our store should last you for many years.